What conspiracy theory do you believe in? I've never used Tinder, just used OKC a few years back before I got into my relationship, and I definitely could see that being a thing, based on what some people say. OkCupid has amazing data available to read through in a public blog. If you're interested in statistics on dating, it's really interesting. I'm sure if you Google OkCupid data or stats, it would probably come up. The first time I heard about microplastics, it was back in my first year of uni, 2019. We had to complete a paper outlining its effects on the environment, people, and animals. We basically had to create a giant mind map. When we finished the project I felt physically sick because I realized just how much we're fucking up our world. You're completely right. Plastics secrete chemicals when we use them which fucks with our hormones slash fertility slash mental health. It then gets thrown into the ocean or dumps, which are not properly managed in many countries. All the toxins secrete into the plants, water, soil, air. We grow our food in the same soil that absorbs the toxins. We eat animals that have eaten plastics. Microplastics are in our stomachs, muscles, cells, everywhere. If people found out just how polluted we are, Many governments and companies would have hell to pay. It's a rule that the bedsheets and facilities for high-profile criminals are made out of paper in the event that they try to get out of their sticky situation via suicide. Those were regular bedsheets that he could use just like a rope, they don't make mistakes like that. Think about how many important politicians that are still in power right now he knew. They're not just gonna let their entire career get squashed because Epstein got caught so they killed him. It doesn't seem that far outside of the realm of reality and if you think it does, I think you should reevaluate what you believe is possible and the lengths that slimy politicians will go to to save their asses. Ads are intentionally annoying. Like we all know certain ads that advertise themselves like Pandora advertising the paid version are there to make you realize how annoying ads are. But I think ads use psychology and care more about how much you think of them than how much they praise the product. Like it's easier to piss people off than to make them laugh or actually think about the product and the more people think about the ad the more the name sticks in their head. Any publicity is good publicity. I don't know about that but they have been stealing content from other websites in order to give you answers without having you go to the other site. There is a site called Genius that compiles lyrics and they proved that Google was scrapping their site without permission or attribution. They confronted Google and Google said they didn't know and would stop it, then were caught doing it again while trying to cover up the fact they were doing it. Unfortunately the court which the lawsuit Genius filed against Google has been dismissed. The Tom's Piracy, basically, in WWE, yes, wrestling. There's a commentator, Tom Phillips, who used to conduct interviews with wrestlers. Now, normally, the wrestlers, the male ones, anyway, are always bigger and taller than non-wrestling personalities. However, we know that Phillips is a tall man and yet still appeared shorter than the people he interviewed. The Tom's Piracy is that during his interviews, he would bend his knees or spread his legs below the frame of the camera to make himself appear shorter. Also, Big Bossman raised the briefcase and Stone Cold Steve Austin's ladder match at King of the Ring 1999, the one the year after Undertaker threw mankind off the Hell in a Cell. So the way a ladder match works is that there will be an item, usually a championship belt or briefcase, suspended above the ring and the wrestlers have to climb a ladder to retrieve it. First to do so wins the match. When Austin was about to win, the briefcase mysteriously raised up just out of his reach. Why do I say that Big Bossman raised the briefcase? One of the stipulations was that any member of the corporation faction who interfered in the match would be fired. Bossman was kicked out of the group just before the match, and on the Raw after the event, he was just back in the group with no explanation. Coincidence? I think not. I know nothing about WWE, but that Tom Spiracy is quite common practice in journalism. I've seen many reporters bend their knees to be at eye level of their subject. The reason for this is so that the subject doesn't seem weirdly small or tall. Therefore the audience can focus on what's being said, 
instead of being distracted by the height difference between the interviewer and subject. Excuse me if my choice of words is odd, English isn't my first language. I feel like that murder was so insidious because the implications are so awful it was bound to be blocked out by people. Philosophy Tube had a video a while back where she talked about willful ignorance. Like many people have a sort of vague knowledge of how awful factory farming is and the level of abuse that animals are put through to put a burger or piece of chicken on your plate, but they don't think about it. If you think about it that makes it real and you're forever unable to go back. It seems like the Epstein thing is very much like that. We all know he was murdered but as long as we don't really do anything about it there's a level of doubt. If we all took to the streets and raged leading to arrests and prosecution it would mean it's all real. That there really is some global pedophile ring including everyone from politicians to actors and even the CEOs of video game companies. I'm not a psychologist obviously. But there has to be some explanation for the level of inaction beyond politicians covering it up. A case significantly more disturbing than what we know about Epstein actually happened in the late 1980s and early 1990s in Belgium, where it seems that police and the judiciary actively covered up actions of serial killer and child molester. Something like 20 key witnesses to the crime are all killed in mysterious and violent ways. HTTPS colon slash slash and dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash mark underscore du trucs. There was actually a string of insane conspiracies in Belgium at the time and high amounts of corruption in the government being exposed. Also two assassinations unrelated to the du trucs case. Just to add to this. I read an article a while back about how the Trudeaus would go down there pretty frequently, one time being when Justin would have been conceived. All their trips in that area were recorded except one which would have been the one when they went to Cuba. They were really good friends with Castro and the Trudeaus were known to be swingers. I don't know how much that article was vetted, but when you look at a picture of Trudeau side by side with Castro, it's hard to discredit lol. He looks nothing like his father. Epstein didn't kill himself, broken bone in the neck more consistent with strangulation than hanging. Also given the amount of hidden cameras he had in some of his residences, he most likely had video evidence of politicians and Hollywood stars committing illegal acts. But as usual the media played the common people against one another and had us arguing over some other dumb shit. They had late night hosts and influencers run interference and label anyone who questioned the circumstances no matter how strange, a conspiracy nut. A part of me agrees but another part of me doesn't. There is a woman I watch on YouTube whose focus is learning about historical dress. The most likely reason the pocket situation sucks is that the current style makes it hard to put in pockets that mess with the desired style silhouette. If you look at many dresses and such from before they had very generous pockets because it's easier to hide the bulk. I do agree though that those handbag companies probably have a hand in keeping the pocket situation how it is now. Every time there's been a major press release from NASA in these years, there's been leaks hours before. This includes stuff like the controversial phosphine in Venus atmosphere research that was then possibly debunked. If her agents had photographed aliens on Titan, you'd know. Because a thousand overexcited scientists would have gone around squealing like unhinged fangirls and screaming it to everyone they would cross before NASA could even try putting a lid on it. It used to sound plausible to me until I watched the documentary on the Bulls recently. He was under a lot of pressure, feeling isolated all the time holding up in his hotel room when playing away games because people wouldn't leave him alone. Most likely explanation is that he was just feeling miserable having his greatest love in life being turned into an absolute chore and decided to step away for a while. Then once the intense spotlight was off him he realized that he missed basketball, and also he was mediocre at best in terms of MLB, so he decided to go back to what he was excellent at. Did he gamble a lot? Yes. Did he have a problem? He was always able to pay his debts. He was making multiple millions a year off of endorsements in his restaurant. He would have had to be extremely in debt for some mob types to off his father over gambling debts since he was obviously good for at least a few million a year if he lost a big bet. 
In the UK I'm convinced of the opposite. Our government is infamously trying to privatize our healthcare, under the guise that it's struggling. The pandemic is the perfect way to show this. If the hospitals are overwhelmed with COVID patients, hospitals have to cancel other things such as minor surgeries, cancer checkups etc. This drives a lot of people to private hospitals for a treatment, and makes people cross that routine healthcare is being pushed to one side. The English government has consistently waited too long to lock down and has always opened far too early and too quickly. March last year, we were two weeks behind Italy in terms of cases. We had a prediction of what would happen to us playing out in front of our eyes, giving us plenty of warning. Instead, we waited two weeks and then locked down, allowing for cases to surge. The government allowed Christmas gatherings despite growing cases, and then cancelled it at the last minute. I believe this is so people would go screw it, it's Christmas and meet up anyway. But the government could clean their hands of the responsibility. The government constantly says that they trust the public to use their common sense, despite the fact that 1. The British public as a whole does not have common sense and 2. The constant changing of rules makes it hard for anyone to know what is and isn't allowed. It's my own personal theory that I've mentioned before but I'll say it again. Patsy Ramsey killed John Bonet not Burke Ramsey. I fully believe that Patsy had Munchausen by proxy but instead of manifesting in the usual way of making her daughter sick, breaking bones, etc., she instead dressed her six-year-old up like a 40-year-old cowgirl working for Heidi Fleiss and paraded her in front of pedophiles for those beauty pageants. The show Toddlers and Jairs just cemented this theory for me because those mums, and dads, are 100% about the attention they get by victimizing their children for trophies, not about their kids' mental and emotional health and well-being. But eventually it wasn't enough so she first decided to fake a kidnapping for attention, but then lost it and out and out assaulted and killed her daughter, which woke up John Ramsey and in a panic to protect his wife he first tried to frame the sleeping and innocent Burke, then realized Patsy might confess to save Burke, get more attention on herself. So he instead did everything in his power to mess up the investigation. The majority of foul ups were caused by him doing stupid things like inviting friends over and the like. Think about it. The majority of the time when a child is kidnapped, killed the parents end up divorcing from the stress. But they stayed together until her death. He's the one who did stupid things that made finding John Bonet's murderer next to impossible. He was obviously protecting his mentally ill wife who assaulted and murdered their daughter for attention. The sinking of the luxury ferry Estonia was caused by a missile strike. The official explanation that the ramp became unlatched and the ship took on water simply don't match up with the sheer speed with which the ferry sank and the loud boom heard by the survivors. Scientific expeditions to the wreck were immediately banned until 2020 when a private crew snuck out to the sunken ship and discovered a massive hole in the wreckage. I really believe that over the next several years we're going to find out that one of the most horrifying modern maritime disasters was an act of violence. Not so much a conspiracy theory as a theory of why we're where we are in history. I believe Thatcher and Reagan created the current political mess we're in. Thatcher broke the unions in the UK, with the UK miners' strike of 84-85, while Reagan broke the air traffic controllers' strike in 81. I believe this led to unions going out of fashion in both the UK and the US. The consequences of this can be felt to this day, with the loss of union powers. Capitalism began to run more unchecked. This over time led to closure of industry in quite a lot of towns. Loss of jobs led to towns becoming poor. Large amounts of people who were previously lower middle class became poor. Without money, they lost political power. This led to apathy. They still got children, who grew up poor. 30-40 years later, with the help of the internet, this large, mostly non-voting section of the population was rediscovered and targeted in ads campaigns and political propaganda, greater than and encouraged to vote for Brexit in the UK and Trump in the US. And here we are today, not a conspiracy per se, but rather my belief in how we ended up where we are now. While I'm rather right-wing economically and left-wing socially, greater than it makes me despair to see how classic liberalism seemed to have screwed us. 
with the on MLK, Malcolm X was killed by members of the Nation of Islam, and Farrakhan has admitted that to an extent. Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan admits his complicity in the 1965 murder of Malcolm X while seated across the table from the civil rights leader's oldest daughter in a 60 Minutes interview to be broadcast Sunday. Atla Shabazz, then six, saw her father gunned down in the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem on February 21, 1965. Three men with ties to the Nation of Islam were convicted in the slaying. A year earlier, Malcolm X's criticism of Nation of Islam spiritual leader Elijah Muhammad had caused a bitter split with church leaders, including Farrakhan. Farrakhan called Malcolm X a traitor and wrote, two months before the killing, that such a man is worthy of death. Farrakhan has denied ordering the assassination but later admitted to having helped create the atmosphere that led to it. During his four-hour meeting with Shabazz, Farrakhan said, Yes, it is true that black men pulled the trigger. We cannot deny any responsibility in this. Where we are responsible, where our hands are a part of this, we beg God's mercy in forgiveness. Could it be the case, hear me out? that this was a psychological experiment where the idea was to make the crew believe that they had teleported and infused with the ship, like psychologically they couldn't leave. I would find it hard to believe that organic flesh was actually, physically infused into metal, but what I could believe is that the crew felt they couldn't leave or move from the ship, or felt stuck to their position in the ship, or stuck against the inside or whatever. Then the story can be both real, and unreal. You tell me. What were the pictures like? The American government lies about the voting and keeps the Electoral College because it makes it seem viable when in reality the ones that get the votes are the ones that sell out to the big corporations and do whatever the fuck they want to start yet another war in the Middle East signed bills that make exploiting oil-filled native land easier and bills that allow them to exploit our behavior data easier. And if they fail or back out of the promise they'll make their lives living hells with fake allegations or in some cases murder. Maybe, but to be honest, looking at the conditions of the world, it is plausible that COVID emerged on its own. The way that animals are kept in most places are the perfect breeding grounds for diseases to emerge. Not to mention the positive correlation between deforestation and emergence, spread of disease. Many scientists have even said that the rate of the emergence of diseases is increasing. In fact, in December 19th, I actually had to research climate change for school. And I read that we can expect more diseases to emerge as the climate crisis worsens. Instead of putting band-aids on issues like these, we should be trying to prevent it. So I'm a former addict and the amount of dope that I had to shoot just to feel normal would kill any non-addict or in most casual users. I don't have an opinion on this theory, but every time someone says he had too much dope in his system to function I cringe. You know Purdue had a guy taking 25 by 160 MG Excitons twice a fucking day and that guy said he was barely noticing it, because of his history with heroin and substance abuse. We have yet to find the upper limit of opiate tolerance in humans, so that's one thing this theory should leave behind. Maybe they were more civilized before and then went savage after the introduction of some new religion or some other bullshit. Like how at one point the Middle East was apparently leading the world and in math and science and then it became. What is it now? Hell it's even happening in the West right now. No one listens to logic anymore. Just look at how society is reacting to COVID. If people behave the same way during past pandemics. A lot of us wouldn't even be here right now. Societies can absolutely go backward and get dumber. It's not always a forward march. There is a bit of Mayan history which hints at both being true. Quetzalcoatl, who taught the maths and architecture and other fun stuff like that. He was also incredibly anti-conflict. His time spent with the Mayans was referred to by them as the Golden Age. But you're probably thinking, but the Mayans did human sacrifices and other pro-conflict stuff. In fact they're known as those guys that invaded and sacrificed people. Quetzalcoatl left after his brother arrived and they had an argument, 
circuit was Zolotl who had arrived and he told everyone the world was going to end, but that if they could postpone the end of the world with human sacrifices. That's the reputation. Now can you guess what date he originally gave? You'll really kick yourself for not realizing if I have to tell you. Edit, Reddit being fun and not allowing backspace or delete to work. 